In this lesson, I'm just going to remind you of a couple of properties that you should have seen at some point in the past. Um, so the first one is the commutative property of addition and multiplication. And so what the commutative property of addition and multiplication says is basically that order does not matter. It doesn't matter um, what order you add in or what order you, order you multiply in, you're going to get the same answer, right? So, you know, what do I mean by this? Well, you know, 5 plus 3 is 8, but so is 3 plus 5, right? 5 times 3 is 15, but so is 3 times 5. So switching the order for addition and multiplication does not change the result. Uh, the associative property of addition and multiplication, I think, is a little uh, kind of stranger than the commutative property when it's written out in symbols. But here's what it's saying. You know, if you have um, a few different things added together, let's say 3 plus 4 plus 5, remember that parentheses mean do this first. So what this says here is add 3 and 4 first, then add 5. Uh, the associative property says that, well, it doesn't really matter which ones you do first. You could have added 4 and 5 first, and then added 3, and you get the same thing, right? And you can see that here. 3 plus 4 is 7. 4 plus 5 is 9. But, of course, 7 plus 5 is 12, and 3 plus 9 is 12, right? So it doesn't matter um, when you have uh, more than two numbers that you're adding together, doesn't matter what order you do it in. And the same thing holds for multiplication as well. So let's just do one example where we're going to use both the commutative property and associative property of uh, multiplication to simplify this expression. Okay, And, and really simplify, we're going we're gonna to define what that means a little more carefully in the next section, in section 3.3. For now, just understand that if there are if you have two different numbers multiplied or added together um, in your expression, and you can put them together by actually adding or multiplying, you should do so and collapse it down into a single number. Um, and same thing with variables. So, uh, so for now, we'll just use that kind of vague definition of simplify and understand that we can make this look a little bit nicer. So you might look at this and, and see, okay, I've got negative 7, negative 8. Can I do anything with those? Can I multiply them? Um, well, yes, you can, and, and here's the justification for why. So first of all, these parentheses mean do these things first. So it's saying take negative 7 times x, then take negative 8 times x, and then when you're all done, you can multiply them both. But what we understand is the associative property says, it doesn't really matter what you do first, so we're just going to actually drop all of the parentheses and just have everything multiplied together. And I'm just putting parentheses around my negative 8 to kind of protect that negative. But then also the commutative property tells us that we can flip the order of multiplication. So let's flip these two right here so that I can have my numbers next to my numbers and my variables next to my variables. And then now I can take negative 7 times negative 8, that's 56, and then x times x, well remember anything times itself is that thing squared. And so this thing simplifies into 56x squared. Okay. So the associative property of addition, well sorry, of multiplication uh, and the commutative property of multiplication gave me permission to do all this. Now in practice, um, as you get used to these properties, I will be completely okay if you jump straight from the original problem down to 56x squared. So keeping these properties in the back of your mind, you can just say to yourself, okay, negative 7 times negative 8 is 56, x times x is x squared. Um, but do make sure that you go ahead and put numbers in front of uh, variables when they're multiplied together because remember that's just convention is to have the coefficient in front of the variable. 